you guys it's Steph here I am back in my greenhouse it's a beautiful day I'm just soaking up the sunshine I'm really loving being in here it feels amazing I'm trying to buy more bare roots this year just because I am saving so much money last year I didn't really invest in bare roots I just bought all of my plants from the nursery and I just it was really really expensive and so if I can get a head start start potting up some of these bare roots so that I can plan flower beds over winter and just stick these in the ground, have them ready to go. I'm saving about two thirds the money that I would normally spend. And I've been hitting up Home Depot and Lowe's, some of those big box stores. They tend to get stuff in a little bit earlier than the nurseries. I do love going to the nurseries. I do want to support them as much as possible. I especially have one that is near me that is my favorite. So I do spend lots of money there also. But these bare roots are just hard to beat because they're so inexpensive. So if you just saw my recent video on planting bare roots, I discovered a few more bare roots at Home Depot. The other ones I got at Lowe's. So this is my first time visiting there and they had some different varieties. Today I'm just going to be planting one of my favorite shade loving plants. This is my all time favorite probably because it's just a little bit more nostalgic. I remember growing up as a child with my mom as all the other kids were playing around, not noticing the flowers, I'd sit there and admire them. So I kind of got my love for gardening and my passion from my mom. She would grow the bleeding heart. And how do you not plant these shade loving perennials? They have flowers that are heart shaped, so unique. These really are one of those that can handle the deep shade and they will still produce all these beautiful blooms. It will get pretty big, about 35 inches tall and wide, especially with time. And they grow pretty fast. I love that when I put them in the ground, they just seem to really take off. And they are one of the ones to come out the earliest in spring. After we are so eager and sick of winter, these will bring so much joy. And I can kind of just put them anywhere in my shady areas that I have more problems with trying to find a plant that will provide those flowers. So I don't know, they're just really easy to grow where I live. I'm in a zone six B climate. They tolerate pretty much any soil. I would definitely encourage you to choose an area in your flower bed where the soil isn't really dense, super heavy and wet. So we don't want our bleeding hearts to rot. Or you can amend it, add some sand so it drains a little bit better, add some compost. My summers are super dry, so I'm actually going to add a lot of mulch. I'm doing that in all of my flower beds. It's great for weed control, but it also keeps that moisture in. So that's good for my bleeding hearts. I'm not worried about them being too wet. I'm more concerned about them being too dry. All of our climates are a little bit different. I know some of you live in really wet areas, so you might want to do the opposite of what I'm saying. Just kind of know your environment, think about it, and see what's going to be best for your plant. They are are a little bit different they kind of go dormant in midsummer especially when the heat sets in so if you see that your plant is turning yellow and starting to die off it's okay that's very normal for your bleeding heart but I have observed in my climate that if they are in a shadier area those leaves last so much longer that bush will stay nice and full for a very long time but if it's in a sunnier location which it will tolerate those sunnier locations it will die off more quickly and you'll have bare spots in your flower bed so when I'm planting bleeding hearts I'm always thinking about where can I have a bare spot after they are done blooming how is it going to look okay still another benefit to growing these is I'm actually putting them over near my cutting garden area I'm landscaping around my chicken coop and they're really good flowers for cutting so they're gonna be one of those that are gonna be fun to put in vases in spring with my daffodils my tulips I can't quite remember what I have in my yard at the moment last but not least bleeding hearts divide super well if with time you do notice your bleeding hearts are starting to bloom a little bit less it's probably because they are getting a little bit too big those roots underneath the ground are kind of competing with each other that's a good sign to lift and divide them and that way you can start planting them all throughout your yard or they look really great in masses they're just a really easy low maintenance plant okay I'm just going to open this up real quick and show you how nice these bare roots look they look really nice and healthy they're putting on some growth these are some big bare roots right now I'm just going to go ahead and let them soak for about 30 minutes now that they're done soaking I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to pop them up just using these container pots that I bought from the nurseries last year. I have a lot of them. It's a good idea to save them because I start to use them a lot when it comes late winter and I want to get a head start on all of my bare roots. Here's the bare roots. So this top is the crown and then you've got all of these roots. So I'm just going to make sure when I plant these, these are going down vertically and I'm going to leave the crown up just slightly because that's how you should plant them in the ground. I have moved quite a few bare roots and put them all the way under the ground just by like a half inch and they're fine that way too. In here, I just use some potting soil. You can use what you want. I get the miracle Grow from Lowe's. I really like it and I would recommend 
pre-moistening your soil. I didn't do it here. The soil will settle a little bit as I water and then I'll have to add a little bit on top. I'm storing mine in my greenhouse, but if you don't have a greenhouse, you can go ahead and start these indoors. You can do them under some grow lights, stick them in a room. We're just trying to get a head start to get these out in spring. that soil from that one. There we go. Okay guys, I'm really excited to have a head start on these bleeding hearts. One of my favorites, I forgot to mention that it is cold hardy all the way down to zone two. So super cold hardy, nearly negative 40 degrees. So most of us are gonna be able to plant it. They do prefer that morning sun to afternoon shade. If you do live in a climate that's a little bit more mild, you can probably get away with more sunlight. I hope you guys like this highlight of the bleeding heart. I can't wait to show you the updates with this beautiful flower. And thanks for stopping by.